Hey everyone, this is Dwayne De Silva. I'm a SAP Cloud Platform Solution Engineer, and in this session, I'm going to provide an overview of blockchain. Now, aside from being a very cool word to say, blockchain is one of those emerging technology stacks that provides really the promise to fundamentally transform the underpinnings of all business transactions worldwide. Now, in order to understand blockchain, it's important to start with an understanding of the challenges faced by business transactions today. So let's say that we have two parties here, and they would like to engage in some type of transaction. And in this case, we're going to call it a transfer of value. Now, what do I mean by uh, transfer of value? Well, it could be something as simple as exchanging money. It could be the sale, right, of a car. It could even be a larger asset, such as uh, the sale of a home. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have gone to participate in transactions, um, I can be quite uncomfortable. Uh, if, you, if you've been to Craigslist ever, it can make you extremely uncomfortable that you don't have any trust for the other participating party. And one thing that's kind of this fundamental underpinning of transactions in business is that there is little to zero trust inherent right out of the gate. And as a result of that, especially for larger type transactions, this has necessitated the need for third party intermediaries to become involved. And typically there can be one more or many of these third party intermediaries. And while they provide functions um, to the execution of the transaction, they're also brought about in part to, to bring trust to the transaction. Well, that 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 is um, fan, fantastic, but it can um, slow things down and, and and make it difficult. Let's let's take a look at an example. So, if we were looking at let's say a home purchase, uh, a couple of the intermediaries that might be involved in that would be a lender. There could be a title company in involved. We might have an appraiser and many others, right? There could be banks and an inspector and so on. Well, each one of these intermediaries uh, is going to add steps and costs and, and, and things to perform the functions that they do inside of the execution of this transaction. And as a result, this transaction gets more expensive because each one of these intermediaries is gonna take their piece of the transaction pie, if you will. And it can also slow down the process because they have their own processes and workflows and steps that need to occur. Those are some of the core problems I think that many people are aware of, but the introduction of intermediaries brings different challenges to the equation. One of them is that we have this challenge of different or even incomplete data available to the various parties inside of the transaction stream. So there might be an example that we have uh, the lender has this amount of information, maybe the title company has a deep amount of information, but in a narrow area, such as around the asset itself, the appraiser may have a different block and you can see these may overlap, they may not, they're inconsistent. And then the parties themselves usually have very, very little amounts of information. We have this challenge that the data is different and potentially incomplete, right? And this can cause challenges along the way during the execution of the transaction. But it raises another issue that we don't all have the same access to that information. So we have no to maybe little transparency available to the different parties in, in the process. And if, for example, uh, the, the, the buyer here wanted to take a look into the records of the lender, um, they're not gonna be able to see everything, uh, right? At their own discretion, the lender's gonna expose some of that, make some of that available. So, um, and certainly there might be some sharing between the, the third party intermediaries, but there's gonna be a lot of control, right? Around that. So there's not a lot of transparency in the process. The other aspect of what it can occur are errors in the data, right? In, in, in our example, uh, in, in home purchasing, there are an estimated 30% of titles in, uh, in the US with errors in them. Well, not having the transparency to check if those, uh, what those are, 
Um, it's really you know up to the title company to make that to manage that process, to control those errors, to fix those errors. Um, and so errors and the lack of transparency um, can can really cause expenses and, and and time delays going through this process. And, and and one of the other large challenges is because the information is really uh, blocked away or, or secured away by each of the end of, uh, individual entities, it can be tamperable. And let's take, for example, we have uh, a, a uh, hacker out here, right? And this hacker is uh, intent on uh, changing some aspects of the appraisal data. Um, that hacker would simply need to gain access to that appraisal database and make changes. In, in database terms, they could make, create records, they could read records and get information, they could potentially update ones change records uh, or even delete information. And, and the danger here becomes that it's a risk for both the buyer and the seller, but especially the buyer that if records were modified to say that maybe a, a home repair was repaired after a flood when it wasn't, right, they're ending up with that risk and, and taking on that financial burden uh, for themselves. So um, th these are some of the challenges, some of the key challenges that are involved with, with the current way that transactions are executed today. And even with all of these third party intermediaries, it still doesn't fully bridge the trust gap, right? Can, can we truly trust the inspector performing the inspection? Do we know if it's a relative of the, of the seller or if they've gotten all the uh, entries correct and they found everything on the house? Can, can we trust the title records? Is, is my house one with one of those uh, errors in it? So uh, definitely still some challenges uh, to be had in this way. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of the challenges faced with the current methods and approaches for executing business transactions, how, how does it work with blockchain? How does blockchain help in this case? So let's go back. We have our um, two parties, let's say, and we want to execute a transaction between them. And let's keep continue with our prior analogy that we have a house that we're, that we're looking to transfer. How is this different? Okay, so the, one of the first aspects is we talked about how data was isolated. Uh, we didn't have a lot of transparency in the process. So one of the first aspects of blockchain is this concept of a distributed ledger. And if you think of a ledger this being really a, a history or a record of transactions, um, what we had in our, in, in our current approach is different pieces and parts of the transactional ledger being held by the different parties, right, in the chain, the different third party intermediaries. So with blockchain instead, uh, the ledger and a copy of that information is available everywhere. So there usually are not just two parties in a transaction. In a, in a blockchain network, there are going to be many participants, many nodes available. The uh, blo blockchain nodes is a term for uh, a participant in a blockchain network. And each one of these nodes and participants has a complete copy of the entire ledger. And this is what's meant by the concept of a distributed ledger, meaning no one party has control over the transaction history or the ledger. It's distributed amongst everybody that participates in this blockchain network. So it immediately um, lends itself to uh, transparency and openness because everybody has the ability to view the ledger. They can view what version or copy of the ledger is available to any node where they all should be synchronized. And we'll talk about when it isn't, what, what that means. But now we have a complete openness and transparency because the ledger is, is kept in multiple places and it's open to anybody that, that is allowed to participate in this particular blockchain network to be able to uh, participate and get a copy of that ledger. Uh, so it's already fundamentally different than having very isolated uh, sets of information in third party intermediaries. Uh, the other aspect of the ledger that, 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 that's very powerful, if, if we look at the ledger itself and how records are added, you have in today's uh, transactional ledgers, this concept of, of you write a record, this is number one, uh, we, we, we add a new one on it, we add a new one on it, and so on. But uh, the, the, the challenge here is that whether by error uh, or whether by some malicious intent, 
these records can be changed, right? We could um, insert one here that we did a modification. Someone did a modification to the property that didn't really happen. We could change that that inspection that was bad really wasn't that bad. We could edit the information. We could delete information. So in today's ledger, that, that's a real challenge because it lends itself to uh, tamperability. But in blockchain, it's fundamentally different. In blockchain, when we have a, a, a transaction written into uh, the, the, the ledger, we, we utilize cryptography to create essentially a key using a cryptographic hash that gives a unique signature to that, that transaction information right there. What's amazingly powerful about blockchain, though, is as we begin to continue to add transactions to the blockchain, we don't just create a key for block two or transaction two. Instead, what happens is, is in the blockchain, we actually wrap the entire preceding transaction together with the new one, and we create a new key that includes all of the information um, to date in that transaction history. This continues, right? If we add a third transaction, this then gets locked and gets a key for it. You can see that this is much more secure and powerful because you're not individually locking a particular record, you're tying them together and thus the term blockchain. And this provides a sense of immutability, if this is a chain going through here, a sense of immutability that, that prevents or at least provides a very powerful principles to prevent someone from tampering with this record. And there are additional uh, studies we can talk about in, in, in another session about how that really works and the implications of that. But that's how it's fundamentally different. So a blockchain is, it truly lends itself to being immutable, right? Uh, to, to, to really prevent change from going on. It's also very secure on a broader scale, okay? So let's say, for example, uh, we have our, uh, our hacker from our, our, our prior uh, example, and, and our hacker is out here and is wanting to make a change again to our information and tries to go in here and makes a modification to one particular blockchain. Let's say that they're successful with that, and maybe they can even try to make it look like it, it, it is normal. Well, here's the challenge. That will then stick out because all of these other copies that are available to these other nodes here are going to show something different. And they're going to see that the, the hacker's version is completely different than all of the other versions on the network. And thus, there are things called consensus algorithms that are designed to determine whether or not to accept a change or a new entry into the network. And in this case, this modification will be rejected because in, in the case of these consensus algorithms, it would not allow that in there because all of the other nodes in the network disagree with it. So it's very secure and immune to attack because a hacker would have to actually take and attack a majority of the nodes of which there could be hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands in order to be successful. Well, a as a result of this, right, um, because we have eliminated, you know, for the most part, third party intermediaries, um, and, and, and simplify the process and made it more secure, this really becomes a, a method towards a cheaper and a faster type of a transaction and definitely more secure um, uh, than, than the traditional approaches uh, followed today. Okay, I hope this has been helpful to, for you to gain an understanding of some of the core components of blockchain as well as its uh, promised benefits and begin to get a glimpse into how blockchain is going to fundamentally impact business transactions going forward. Thanks for watching.